Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. This is a cataract uh, nigra, a black cataract, very hard cataract. We are going to observe the full surgery in this case. The surgery has been started. This is the main incision with a 2.8 millimeter steel keratome and this is a three planar incision and now this is a side board on the right side of the main incision about three o'clock hours away and this is another side board on the left side of the main incision about two and a half o'clock hours away an air bubble is injected into the anterior chamber and beneath this air bubble tripan blue 0 0.06 percent dye is going to be injected here it is why to stain this capsule because we will get some contrast to do capsular excess if we stain the capsule this is a bit of adrenaline to maintain the dilatation of the people. The dye is thoroughly washed out. And now the antechamber is filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. Yes, even for this black cataract. I'm going to use only this visco because my technique is application of ultrasonic energy within the substance of the nucleus. The capsular axis has been started. The plan is to make a large axis. at least 6 millimeter maybe even 6.5 millimeter and in this case I believe the size of the rexis is about 6.5 in 2 and 8 o'clock axis and 6 millimeter at 5 o'clock 11 o'clock axis it's a kind of oval rexis and now hydro dissection has to be done very carefully we cannot inject a lot of fluid at one place small amounts of fluid has be has to be injected at multiple places and the nucleus is tapped very gently and fluid is injected over the surface of the cataract here is being fluid is injected at around five o'clock the nucleus is moving and it is free but still some attachment may be there so to break the cortico capsular adhesions this is another technique bimanual rotation of the nucleus take two sinski hooks one sinski hook pulls another one pushes and bimanually you rotate the nucleus so the nucleus is now free from the capsule and now the most tricky part of the surgery the exposed part of the fecunidal has to be little more than the routine soft cataracts at least this much but not more than this also some superficial cortical lens matter is removed and now the 
handpiece is turned, bevel is made up towards cornea. And now this is submarine jaw. The tip is buried just in front of the main incision, travels through the substance of the nucleus towards the opposite equator. And now the nucleus is chopped. This is a nice crack. And now to divide the nucleus completely into two heminuclei, we have to rotate 180 degree, come to the other side of the crack, and now after two, three sculpts, go to deeper plane and separate it like this. And the two heminuclei are completely separated from each other. And now this is again the tip is buried into the substance of the heminucleus and it is chopped in this way. When you do this, when the ultrasonic energy is applied within the substance of the nucleus, no ultrasonic energy travels to the corneal endothelium no heat travels to the corneal endothelium and the endothelium remains very nice and now the nucleus has been divided completely into four pieces each nuclear fragment is emulsified it is tilted and the apex is the sharp apex is emulsified first so that it cannot go down and press on the posterior capsule and thus we can we can avoid posterior capsular rain because of the sharp apex of the nuclear fragments. This is a large fragment and dividing it into two smaller pieces still it is attached at the apex turn it tilt it come to the apex and now the two smaller pieces are free ultrasonic energy used in this case is 85 percent flow rate is 45 ml per minute vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury the ultrasonic energy is being delivered in continuous mode but it is being delivered intermittently whenever the TV is occluded only then the foot switch goes to position 3 Even when the tip is occluded, in between, ultrasonic energy is not applied and the ultrasonic energy is applied always within the substance of the nucleus and at the iris plane, the tip is always kept at the central part. And now at this point of time, I have to come out because we have to change the bottle. We have to change the BSS bottle. At this time, uh, before I came out, I asked my assistant to inject Visco. The idea is, if we don't inject Visco, this large piece will come anteriorly and it will hit the corneal endothelium. To prevent that, I asked my assistant to inject visco and then I came out and now the bottle has been changed I've got a fresh bottle of BSS and now here I go in again this video is unedited and you are watching each and every step of the surgery
and this is the last portion of the nucleus still in high vacuum high flow mode but at this time it is wise decision to decrease the parameters we can even come to FECO on mode as I did in this case can come to FECO on mode and emulsify this last small piece FECO on mode means vacuum is only 60 millimeter of mercury flow rate is 25 and ultrasonic energy is 70 percent so the nucleus has been managed safely now I inject visco before I remove cortex I have to remove some small pieces of nucleus otherwise these small bits of nucleus can get lost under the iris particularly when the people is not well dilated and now before I use bimanual irrigation aspiration I use the Simco cannula to remove some cortical lens matter the assistant gets enough time to make the bimanual irrigation aspiration ready and now this superior portion of the cortex can be safely removed by the bimanual irrigation aspiration the irrigation goes through the right side port aspiration through the left and the cortex from the superior aspect is removed it is done little bit of polishing of the posterior capsule and now a hydrophobic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens is implanted keeping the antechamber formed under irrigation if we can do this we save lot of time because if we inject visco to implant the intraocular lens this is a cotton fiber which was entangled at the trailing haptic it has been removed if we in implant the intraocular lens under visco we have to spend adequate time for a removal of the visco but if we can implant the lens keeping the antechamber formed by irrigating proof we save a lot of time this is a bit of moxifloxus in the now the side ports are closed hydrating corneal stroma on either side of the stab incisions the side ports are closed and now a final lavage of the anterior chamber at this time any visco sticking to the corneal endothelium is removed the antechamber is formed very nicely and the case is concluded I have some postoperative pictures taken 18 hours after surgery let us observe this see the cornea is clear antechamber is quiet intraocular pressure is 14 millimeter of mercury unaided vision is 6 by 12 the patient is very happy and I am happy because the cornea is so clear though I have used only SPMC as the viscoelastic substance thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills be a great surgeon always put yourself into challenging situations to increase your surgical skills